Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. Listen, out of all the videos that I've done, this is probably the most important video and you'll see why. Because there is so much confusion, so much false information um, that it's very complex for people. So I want to break it down step by step. It's a little bit longer, but it's very important. So we're going to answer the question, is the so-called bad cholesterol, LDL, really that bad? Okay. Well, first of all, LDL is not cholesterol. Um, in order for it to transport cholesterol through the body, which is fat doesn't mix with water. It just doesn't mix. So the body is, has developed little shuttles or different particles or vehicles to transport cholesterol. Okay? And uh, you have LDL, low-density lipoprotein, and you have HDL, high-density lipoprotein. LDL, which is considered bad, really is a kind of a misnomer because um, LDL really is the cholesterol that goes from the liver to the vascular system to the cells. So it's going through into the body, okay? HDL is this the opposite. It's going from the vascular system back to the liver to be recycled or eliminated, okay? So really, these two types of uh, proteins are exchangers that are just constantly working together to exchange cholesterol back and forth to transport cholesterol and triglycerides, which are blood fats, okay? So that's the first thing you need to understand. Let's go to the next part. Okay, so you may already know that the body makes cholesterol, right? It makes a lot, 3,000 milligrams every single day. That's equivalent to about 14 eggs, the cholesterol in 14 eggs, the cholesterol in 300 strips of bacon, or the cholesterol in about a pound of butter, okay? That's a lot of cholesterol. Now, why does it make so much? Well, it's there to provide raw material for cell membranes. Half the cell, all the cells in the body, are made out of cholesterol. And you have 100 trillion cells. That's why we need so much cholesterol. So it's part of the structural property of a membrane around your cell, which allows exchange back and forth of nutrients and vitamins and uh, minerals and um, glucose and all sorts of things. So it also has antioxidant properties. It prevents free radical damage. It has anti-inflammatory properties. It makes vitamin D. It's the precursor, the building blocks for vitamin D. It actually helps you make bile that then helps you uh, dissolve the fat and extract the fat-soluble vitamins from the fat that you eat. Very important. Without, without cholesterol, you can't have that happen. Cholesterol is there to make the stress hormone cortisol, and cortisol is essential for life. And all the sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, uh, are all made from cholesterol. These are the normal functions of cholesterol, but you have additional functions that a lot of people don't know about because cholesterol also responds to crisis. Like if someone um, has an infection in the body, cholesterol will go up because it binds and inactivates bacterial toxins. It also prevents the damage from microbes. It also acts as a band-aid. So in the cell membrane, you have the endothelial layer, which is the layer around the inside of the blood vessel. Okay? And that actually has little pores that exchange back and forth. White blood cells, nutrition, things go back and forth. So if you were to get a little tiny a lesion, ulcer, damage from various things, which I'll cover in a bit, um, the cholesterol is there to go in there and help heal and actually to provide a Band-Aid. That's the real purpose. Okay, let's go to the next part. Okay, so now this part is very, very important. So if you've checked out, just check back in with me. Hang in there because this is the most vital piece of this puzzle. Okay, there's two types of LDL. When you get your LDL checked on your routine cholesterol uh, assessment, um, it doesn't differentiate between this type or that type. So it's type A or type B, or you can call it pattern A or pattern B. Okay, they don't differentiate the two. Um, the type A is large buoyant. That means it floats, right? It's big and fluffy. Uh, it doesn't go into the epithelial wall, it doesn't create uh, involved in any uh, placking or clotting or anything like that. So this is more normal LDL, okay? This type B are small, dense. These, key, these little guys can go right into the epithelial wall and they can uh, start to be involved in the placking formation. So 
when people have heart attacks and strokes, you know, they have more of type B. Okay, makes sense? So that you see more oxidation and build up plaque. Type A, it pretty much lasts two days in your body. Type B lasts about five days, so it hangs out longer. So how do you know which is which? You can do a very uh, advanced test if you want, but a better thing to do, an easier thing to do, I wouldn't say it's better, but it's easier, is to look at the triglycerides and the HDL. Okay, so let's say your LDL is normal or high, whatever. If your triglycerides, because there is a, um, a percentage of triglycerides in LDL in addition to cholesterol, if you look at the triglycerides and the HDL, if the triglycerides are high and the HDL, so-called good cholesterol, is low, then chances are you have more type B LDL, okay? But if the triglycerides are low and you have high HDL, you have more of type A. So that's how you would differentiate um, what type you would have. And last point I want to mention is this. What types of foods will increase type A versus type B? Saturated fats will increase type A. Interesting. When you consume more carbs and refined sugars and sugar itself, you increase type B. And this is why nearly all the blood uh, assessments that I see when pa patients come in, they always have high triglycerides and low HDLs, the, the people that are consuming carbs. But if you actually eliminate this and you do more saturated fats, you don't have to worry about it because you'll have, you may have even high LDL, but it's the type A that doesn't create a problem. Now, one last point, and this is the most important point. Let's say you do have type B. It's not that it's a bad cholesterol. It's not the villain. It's not the criminal. It's at the crime scene, but it's there to actually heal the lesion, the problem, the inflammation, uh, the damage from the inflammation or the microbes that's behind it. And so this is only bad in that it's part of the chain of events that occurs that it's there trying to fix things. But in the process, it doesn't think, the body doesn't think long term. It thinks with short term survival. So it's going to form a plaque and a clot to try to heal the area, just like you would if you sprained an ankle or broke a joint, scar tissue comes in and heal it. It doesn't care if the joint moves anymore. It's there to protect and stop the motion. So yes, it creates a problem because you will die of a heart attack and stroke, but the body's not thinking long term. It's thinking, let's go ahead and patch that artery and let's, let's start putting a Band-Aid and it starts growing bigger and bigger and bigger. The point is that we need to change the eating plan. We need to get these out of the diet and then your body can assimilate these a lot better. Um, all right, so now let's go to the next part. Okay, so now the question is, why would someone have high LDL pattern B? Okay, we already talked about the sugar, right? Um, because sugar creates inflammation. It, it's very destructive to the cells. That's why diabetics have a lot of nerve damage, vision problems, inflammation, coronary heart disease. So sugar and refined carbs are really, really bad. Okay. Also, low thyroid will create it. Uh, high cortisol will create um, higher amounts of pattern B. Stress. Uh, vegetable oils, the soy and the corn oil and canola, all that GMO, that's vegetable oils, that's high in omega-6 fatty acids. That creates more inflammation in the body. Uh, trans fats, hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated fats will do it. Low vitamin C, just like a situation where you get bleeding gums, you get bleeding arteries. Uh, glycation, what is glycation? That's when you combine glucose or fructose with a protein or a fat. So let's say you take barbecued sauce and you put it on uh, some ribs and you bake it, you heat it over a 200, I think, and 48 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. You're going to get glycation. So the glycation means that it's this combination of sugar with protein that goes in the body. It's very sticky and it starts creating high levels of pattern B, among other issues as well. Fries. So they take sugar and they spray it on french fries, they deep fry it, same deal. Donuts, deep fried donuts, glycation. Uh, 
Um, what's interesting is so you, when you combine uh, protein with sugar or sugar with fat and you uh, bake it or you cook it, you create glycation. Um, also, when you consume high fructose corn syrup or fructose um, in the form of refined fructose or a tremendous amounts of fructose, um, you can increase glycation by 10 times, okay? Because it combines in your body. So not only does it have to be you know, external, it can be internally as well, okay? And then surgery will increase pattern B because, of, because LDL is a healer. It's trying to be, go in there like an ambulance and actually fix things. That's the purpose. It's trying to help you. And what do people do? They take a statin. They try to eliminate it. They're not understanding why we need LDL. Visceral fat will also trigger pattern B as well. Um, so anyway, those are the things that will increase the real, um, it's not bad cholesterol. It's the, it's the cholesterol that creates, that's involved in the crime scene, in the damage. All right. Okay, in summary, we just want to understand cholesterol, LDL, what it is and what it's not, and use as an indicator to pull the string to find out why it might be high. If it's higher, it could be normal if the triglycerides are normal and the HDL is normal. Uh, but if there is a problem with these, then you have to under ask why. Do I have a hypothyroid issue? Are, am I eating too much sugar? Am I doing this? Did I just get done with some surgery or trauma? All right? Thanks for watching. Put your comments below. Hi, guys. Hey, listen, I created a pretty amazing evaluation quiz down below that actually analyzes your symptoms to find the cause, the root cause of all of your symptoms, the most likely cause. So take the quiz now, and we'll send you a report.